Hello my croutons, and welcome back to another RPG Maker tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at how to add footstep sounds into your game without the need of plugins. Let's get started. To get this working for the player character, we will only need to make two common events, and depending on how you're using this, you may only need to make one. Let's start with a smaller one. This common event is only three lines of code, and what it does is detect the player character's region ID, which are these funky little tiles right here. First, you'll need to create a control variables event, which is located under game progression. Under single, create a new variable and call it x. Make sure operation is set to, well, set, and now the interesting part. In the operand section, scroll down to game data and click on it. Now go down to the character section and set it to player, and then in the box right next to it, set it to map x. What we have just done is set variable x to store the player's x position on the map at any given time. But, a map isn't just side to side, it is also up and down, so we will need to store the y variable as well. This is basically the same process as x. Create a control variable event, and make a new variable under single and call it y. Make sure operation is set, and go into game data once again. We will want to set player in the character section, but this time, instead of calling the map x, we need to call map y. Once you've done that, click OK. Now for the last step of this common event create a new event command. Go to the third tab and under map click on get location info. Create another new variable and call it region ID. Under info type set it to, well, region ID, and then under location click designation with variables and set x to our x variable and y to our y variable. Click OK and boom! We've now set our region ID variable to constantly store the player character's region ID. Good job! Now we just need to put that into action. Create a new common event and get your brain ready. This isn't too difficult, but there is quite a bit of code. Depending on how many different types of terrain you have on one map, you can code this differently, and if you're only using one type of terrain, then you don't even need our detect region ID common event. Anyways, let's get coding. Create a conditional branch, and set it to check if variable region ID equals a constant of zero, or whatever region ID you're using. Click OK, and inside of that conditional branch, create another conditional branch. This time, go to the fourth tab, and in the script section, write in this line of code. This will check to see if the player character is actually moving, because you don't want there to be footstep sounds when you're standing still. Inside the first part of our common event, create a control variables event. Create a new variable under single and call it footstep sounds. Set operation to set, and then under operand click random and set it from 1 to 2. Doing this will allow us to slightly change the pitch of our footstep sounds at random to give a more organic feel to the game or you can just have crazy random sounds play, whatever you like. Right underneath that, create yet another conditional branch. Set it to check if our footstep sounds variable is equal to 1, and then create an else branch. In the first section of this conditional branch, call whatever sound effect you'd like. I found that it's better to use sounds that only have the noise of one footstep instead of two, so using the built-in move sounds is highly discouraged. Once you've found a sound you like, move on to the else section of this conditional branch. Create one more conditional branch, and this time, make it check if our footstep sounds variable is equal to 2. Now you can just plop in another sound effect, but what I think sounds really nice is if you take your previous sound effect, only this time play it with a slightly increased pitch. For the last bit of this section, create a wait event outside of the conditional branch that is checking for the footstep sounds number. The amount of frames you need to use here varies on the sound you're using. For me I use 22, but it will definitely take some trial and error to get this right. Ka-chow! Just like that, we're done with our first chunk of this line of code. Now, time to check if the player is dashing. Outside of our player moving conditional branch, create another conditional branch. Again, go to the fourth tab, and under script, type this line of code. This will check to see if the player character is dashing. And now the tedious part. You will have to check for each separate directional input. Since there are only four directions we can move organically in the engine, we essentially have to type the same line of code four times. Oh well, that's what copy and paste is for. Inside of our player dash and conditional branch, create another conditional branch. Go to the fourth tab, and in the button section, have it check if down is pressed. Please note that I've only tested this with arrow key movement. Check create else branch, and click OK. Now for this part, you can copy and paste our footstep sounds code from before. The only thing you need to change is the wait command. Make it a shorter amount of time. I use 10, so that the sounds play faster, because we're dashing this time. Now from here on out, we can just copy and paste code for each different direction, and then if you only have one terrain tile, just add one more wait command at the end of this code, and boom, we're done! 
Based on the region ID you set at the start, paint over your map in the sections you want these sounds to play. If you set the region ID to zero, the sounds will just autoplay over the whole map. In order for this to actually work, go to your map and create a parallel event and call on both our footstep sounds common event and our detect region ID common event. Click OK, and boom, you've got footstep sounds. However, I set this code up so you can have multiple different terrains on one map if you so choose. If you want to do that, hop back into your common events. It's actually incredibly easy to do this now that we have our base code. Just copy and paste all of the code from before and put it at the very bottom of our common event. Change the region ID conditional branch to be a different number, and then change all the sound effects that play. Boom, that's it. You can simply repeat this process to add as many different terrain tiles as you want, each with their own unique sound effects. So that's implementing footstep sounds for the player character done. However, you can also do this for NPCs. If you want to do that, then just stick around for a bit more. Go back to your common events and create a new one. Let's call it event footstep sounds. Create a conditional branch, go to the fourth tab, and write in this script. This will check if the character that we call this common event on is moving or not. And that's honestly all you need to know. From there on, it's basically just copy and pasting our code from before. When creating the NPC, Make sure to call the common event inside of it and on a loop. You can use the loop command if it's an NPC you interact with, or if you don't interact with the NPC and it's simply walking around, make it a parallel event that only calls the common event, and place the move route in a separate parallel event. I haven't found a way to check for an event's X and Y position, so if you want to have them walk over multiple terrains, you'll have to get a bit creative, but it can be done. One way to do it is creating multiple different common events that play different sounds and switching that NPC into different events for each separate terrain. But that's all for this tutorial. I hope this helps you my croutons, I know it's been very nice to have a custom built system in my game, and hopefully it's very nice for your game as well. Best of luck with your games, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.